Okay, today I will be talking about eye chaser about the prediction of protein structure and function. And in this particular box, you have to place your amino acid sequence, which should be at minimum 10 amino acid, or it should be or maximum 1500 residues, and it should be in faster format. And then you have to place all your credential here. And if you put the correct credentials here, you will have to hit this tab, which is run eye chaser. After hitting this tab, you will not immediately get the result. It will take time. It they can they will send you the email in a day or so, or it could also take weeks. Why? Because if you have given them a short sequence, uh, they will reply within one or two days. But if you have given a large sequence, a large sequence protein, then it may take a weeks. So it's quite like the way you submit your assignment uh, for plagiarism check uh, and library usually returns the email within week or within few days. So you won't get the immediate result. So uh, here you can see if this screen is visible, you can see that I got a couple of emails from this Zang lab. And if I click this one, then we can see that uh, there is the structure of my Curie protein. And along with you can see that here we have the job ID. And if I want complete detail of my Curie protein, I have to click this link. And after clicking this link, uh, you can see, let me zoom it for you. Just a second. Uh, you can see here that this is my Curie protein, the sequence that I sent to them. And they will give us multiple results, multiple things related to structure and function. At first, you can see the predicted secondary structure. Now you know that protein has many structures, primary, tertiary, quaternary, but specifically we are talking about secondary structure here. And we know that secondary structure is made up of alpha helices and beta sheets. And these particular things are connected with each other by loops, or in other words, that is known as coil, as you can see here. So this is my sequence. And the uh, next line is prediction in the form of alphabets. You can see C and H here, and H usually represents alpha helices, and C is there for coil. And we can judge that this section of our protein is made up of alpha helices, and then this section is made up of coils. Now, my protein does not have any beta sheets, so you are not you are not able to see any blue S there. But there is this another protein. If I show you here. If I click another protein here, another result from eye taser, you can see in that particular protein, you can see blue as well. These, if I highlight this for you. So here we have the beta sheet as well. Let's come back to the first uh, protein. Now, how can we be sure that the result uh, or the predicted structure sent by eye taser is authentic or not? Whether we should rely on it or not. Now, this third line is very important. You can see many numbers here, like nine, seven, and so on digits. If the score is close to nine, if this number is close to nine, that means the predicted structure is quite reliable. But if this number or digit is close to zero, one, two, then we can't really rely on that information because it is a predicted structure, not an experimental based structure. So you can see that along the length of the protein, you can see it is of almost 250 amino acids and some of the structures are more reliable or some sections of my structure are more reliable than other if uh, there is this nine digit. So moving on toward the next thing, which is second thing that they tell us about our Curie protein is solvent accessibility. Now we know that certain amino acids are hydrophobic, certain are hydrophilic and to, to judge which sections are hydrophilic or which sections are hydrophobic, we have to look at this uh, second information. Now here you can see that prediction is only given in the form of digits, not alphabets. And you can see seven there, zero there. If the number is close to nine, if the number is close to nine, that means that particular section or that particular part of the protein is highly exposed residue and highly exposed residue means in very simple and plain words, it means hydrophilic water loving, those things that are attracted towards water. And if the number is close to zero, 
that means they are buried residues or in common plain simple words that means they are hydrophobic so moving toward the next thing which is the predicted normalized b factor now that one is interesting earlier we uh, in the first section we talked about that alpha helices are represented by red h and coil were represented by black c but this time we are talking about uh, this structure graphically so in graphs we tend to use symbols instead of the alphabets so here the color is same for helices but it is in different shape or form and now you can see coil is more likely a dot in the graph here you can see this one is the dot that rep represents coil and this section is red helices alpha helices now here beta sheets if i talk about beta sheet my structure my protein uh, don't really have beta sheet so you're not able to see any green block there but in my second protein you can easily see that uh, if this is visible to you you can see that it has beta sheets in it along with coils and the other thing alpha helices coming back to the first one now what exactly is this b factor we haven't talked about it yet quickly i will tell you that we know that particles amino acids they usually absorb heat energy and they then convert it into kinetic energy and by using that kinetic energy they become mobile that kind of phenomena is known as thermal mobility so here you can see thermal mobility if it is visible to you now this blue lines tells us about the thermal mobility now we know that at the very beginning at the very start we have two coils and these coils have higher b factor so b factor is higher that means they are more mobile but as we move towards this alpha helices and this blue line it is more or likely constant fairly constant and then again when we reach this section the coil again the mobility of the particles or amino acid or the residues is greater so we can uh, get the idea that it's like a trend that whenever we reach coils they, their mobility is higher as compared to the alpha helices now quickly the next thing is top 10 threading templates we know that uh, whenever we give our sequence to let me zoom out uh, whenever we give sequence to this eye teaser it picks up templates from pdb we know that uh, pdb is protein data bank now it picks templates that are quite close to our query protein and by using those templates it can form or create our protein model the query protein model uh, you can click them and after clicking them you will be directed towards pdb and where you can actually see all the details related to the template right now coming back to the first thing um, we have i teaser here now these templates are mainly used for creating our protein model now quickly one thing i have to tell you about this z score out of all the things here this z score is quite important if this z score is higher than 1 then it means that these proteins or these models are quite close to our structure but if this z score is less than 1 that means we can rely on them so all the values are higher than one, so you can rely on these values. And here uh, the same color show conserved regions. Now quickly, next thing. Now the main crux of the whole IT as a software is this section. By using all those templates, by using all those templates that I showed you, it creates our protein model, our query protein model. And here you can do a lot of things with this 3D model. You can spin it, you can uh, zoom it and out in and out and uh, if you can see this you can do a lot of things there you can uh, rotate it you can zoom in and zoom out and if i keep this cursor for longer duration you can see that it is actually telling us that at 13 position we have lysine and it in other some other position we have glutamine at 208 position okay now i was telling you about that uh, whenever we hold our cursor there it shows our amino acids we can do one more thing that we can uh, click the lysine amino acid on blue one and uh, on another strand there, there is this phenylalanine and we can see that it gave us the distance between the two amino acids which is 1.088 nanometer and then one more thing that we can do is we can also judge the angle between certain amino acids or strands which is 38 i think it is 38 degree shown here so we can do a lot of things with this 
and this c score is quite important here uh, it's it usually range between minus 5 to 2 uh, minus 5 and 2 this is the range if this c score is positive then we can rely on this structure that our structure is quite close to the actual structure our predicted structure and uh, we usually we should follow the positive ones but the range is minus 5 to 2 but the most reliable structure is the structure that have positive value, which is quite close to two. Actually, uh, you can see minus four here. You can see other things. Uh, let me show you minus five here as well. This structure won't be that reliable. The fifth structure here, but the positive ones are more reliable. All right, well, let me move towards the last thing. We haven't talked about one last thing, the function. If we talk about the function, here we have uh, this section. If I highlight this, you can see uh, that we can also judge the predicted function of our protein. It, it's molecular function, the biological process in which there is this involvement of our, of our curie protein. So we can click these links. If I click this one randomly, it will lead to another site which will give us its predicted activity or predicted function. You can see that here we have this thigh aminase activity that our curie protein could be related to this thigh aminase activity. And if I come back to the original thing, oops. so it will finally conclude with one last thing that if I click this biological function, it will lead us to another site. This geo basically represents gene ontology and it basically gives us functions related to our curie protein. Here you can see redox reaction that it has some uh, how it has it could have a role in redox process or redox reaction. So I think you can get the idea. Finally, the one last thing is this geo score. Now uh, this geo score should be in uh, the range zero to one. If it is close to one, then the information is reliable that you can see that here we have 0.74 that is quite close to one. That means that a function is quite reliable. But if we have this uh, biological process GO value, which is just 0.39, it is quite close to being zero. So that function is predicted, but may not be that reliable. So with that concluding remark, I would like to end now. Thank you for your patience.